installing the staple system. This system is suitable for large installations and lends itself to irregular shaped rooms. First off, the insulation for the UFH should be fitted to a flat surface. This is important as the sheet insulation must be fully supported for maximum strength. Insulation depth and quality should be as required by design or building regulations, whichever is greater. Confirm with your building inspector that the insulation used is correct before proceeding with the installation of UFH. External walls should also be insulated to building standards to prevent heat loss. Preparing the floor. An expansion strip is required to accommodate expansion that occurs within the screed as a result of it heating up. This strip should be fitted around the room's perimeter and taped to the membrane. The joints must then be securely taped over. Extra expansion joints may also be required at doorways and large floor areas. A polyethylene film 0.15mm thick with 80mm overlaps should be placed over the insulation. This barrier prevents the screed from contaminating the insulation. It also stops liquid screeds from flowing into gaps in the insulation which potentially leads to floating the boards. Multiple circuits. A length of pipe has only a limited capacity to carry heat, so there is a limit to the effective length of a single pipe run circuit. When you have a large room, or the room is a long way from the manifold, it may be necessary to use a number of circuits. Placing the JG manifold centrally to the circuits will greatly reduce the amount or length of circuits needed for a particular installation. This will have a bearing on the cost and performance of a system as well. Installing the circuit. We have shown in the previous video demonstration how to connect to the manifold and run the pipework to the room you are working in. After running the pipe from the manifold or one room pack to the beginning of the circuit, we can start to lay the pipe. Once you have established the area of the floor the circuit will be covering, start laying the pipe and take extra care at the return ends when bending the pipework, as kinking the pipe through rough handling will mean having to renew that section of pipework. Tip: Take care to keep the pipe nice and straight for the first length, as the use of a spacer will follow this line. You may need to use more staples on the bends in the circuit, depending on the grip the staples have in the sheet insulation. Remember, the circuit length includes the route the pipe takes to and from the manifold, as well as the area covered in the room. Having someone feeding the pipework from the coil is essential. Feeding the pipework from the bottom of the coil, staple the pipework about 75 mm from the perimeter. Take care to keep the correct distance between pipe centres. The use of a spacer batten placed between the pipes will help here. Because the pipes are 15mm in diameter, subtracting this amount of room from the centres will give you the length of the spacer to be cut. Counterflow pattern. This is an example of the counterflow laying pattern. It may at first seem more complicated, but it's often easier. When installing counterflow, the pipe is laid and stapled in a spiral pattern, moving into the centre of the circuit where a double return is performed. This means that the initial circuit has to double the designed distance apart. It's usually easy to install the returning circuit in the centre of the pipework runs by eye. Then the pipework is laid in the opposite direction, spiralling outwards from the circuit centre and between the incoming pipe circuits. The pipework is run until the circuit is finished. Serpentine pattern. This is an example of the serpentine laying method. As you can see, the pipework is laid in parallel lines and is returned at the end of each run. When the circuit is completed, ensure you have left enough space for any subsequent circuits to be laid. 
you may now run the pipework you are working with back to the manifold and connect it. A variety of screeds can be used, such as sand, cement or a flowing screed. The screed is typically 50 to 65 mm thick. When laying the screed, care should be taken to ensure that the screed is compacted around the pipe properly. Most screeded floors require 28 days after laying before preheating can begin. However, calcium sulphate screeds may need only 7 days after laying. Check with the manufacturer for specific drying times. Under no circumstances should the UFH be used for speeding up the drying period. If the UFH has been installed when there is a possibility of freezing conditions, suitable antifreeze should be added to protect the pipework. The system will need to be flushed out and refilled prior to operation. When turning on initially, the temperature of the blending valve should be set to the lowest setting, 25 to 30 degrees, and run for two to three days before building up the temperature over the next couple of days.